The nucleus of the cell is the very special location where DNA is housed. And DNA, of course, encodes all of our uh, proteins, all of the genes that we have are stored in the nucleus of the cell. Uh, most cells have just one nucleus, by and large, but there are a couple of exceptions to that. When we learn about muscle cells, we will see that um, when they when they are in the early stages of formation, what happens is a lot of cells actually fuse together, and so a mature muscle cell will actually have many nuclei in it. A single muscle fiber will have lots of nuclei. Um, the other extreme would be if we're looking at red blood cells. When we look at red blood cells, we will see that they actually do not have a nucleus. They are enucleated. They lose their nucleus by the time they are mature. So those would be a couple of exceptions to this general rule, uh, but for the most part, other cells, just in general, they have one nucleus only. The nucleus is enclosed by a special envelope, a nuclear envelope. This is a membrane that has pores embedded in it. In this schematic, the pores are in yellow. And those pores allow transport of very specific things into the nucleus and out of the nucleus. An example of something that needs to be able to move outwards would be mRNA, messenger RNA. We'll get to that in just a moment. Um, so the nuclear envelope has these nuclear pores. Inside of the nucleus, you may have already learned about this in a previous class, there's usually a, a area that stains more darkly, um, this really dense region. This is called a nucleolus, a plural would be nucleoli. And what's going on at the nucleolus is that the components for ribosomes are being built here. This is where ribosomal RNA, rRNA, is produced. And then it gets shipped out of the nucleus through a nuclear pore and when it's in the cytoplasm, it can be uh, built into, into a ribosome. Okay, so what we want to do primarily in this video is learn or review a little bit about gene expression. And this is something that starts inside of the nucleus. So it starts where the DNA is at, and that's right here in the nucleus. So an overview for gene expression. Okay, first off, just what is a gene? When we say that, what are we talking about? A gene is one specific length of DNA, and one gene encodes for a single protein, one very specific protein. So DNA, remember, is, um, is double-stranded, okay, so we've got base pairing going on between nucleotides, and when a gene is transcribed, what happens is the, the, helix, the helix is separated, so the two strands come apart from each other, and one strand is used as a template. That's called the coding strand. This is the one that is encoding whatever protein we're going to end up making. Okay, so during transcription, what happens is an RNA molecule is built that's complementary to this coding strand. Okay, so the coding strand has a T, um, the messenger RNA is going to end up having an A. Okay, wherever there's an A in the DNA strand, the messenger RNA is going to end up having a U. So complementary base pairing rules are followed in order to build an mRNA strand. That mRNA would move out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm, go over to a ribosome, and then that's the location where translation takes place. And what ribosomes do is they read the message that's on the mRNA strand. They read it in sets of three. Each set of three nucleotides is called a codon. And each codon encodes for one amino acid. So the ribosome builds up this chain of amino acids, and then that can fold into a three-dimensional protein, uh, three, 3D protein. Okay, so the genome is the full set of all genes in a particular individual. In the case of humans, we have about 25,000 different genes. That's a huge number of genes. So we're encoding 25,000 different proteins. However, something interesting comes up. If we look at the proteome, the complete set of all proteins that we can produce, uh, we have more than 25,000 proteins. Believe it or not, we have more than 100,000 proteins in our bodies. So how is that possible? Well, it turns out that there are a lot of modifications that can be done in order to produce different varieties of proteins from these 25,000 genes. So a couple of things that can happen 
um, for if we just look at that sort of from the beginning. So when the DNA is transcribed, when we produce mRNA, there are different splicing patterns that we can carry out. I'll show you a picture of this in just a minute. The mRNA can be spliced, it can be sort of cut and reconnected together in different ways. That will in turn lead to different proteins being produced. And then there are also what are called post-translational modifications. So once we've, um, in this case, once we've actually made a protein, we can modify it, we can change it up. There are um, ways that, that our cells can do that. So protein modifications are possible. Methylation, phosphorylation, we'll be seeing some of these a little bit later on. These are other ways to modify proteins and change their functions. And then we can also just cut up proteins. Uh, sometimes if you have one really big protein, it'll do one job. If you cut it into two pieces, then each piece will go and do a different job. So all of those are examples of ways that we can end up with more proteins than just 25,000.